AI is coming for your job. At least that's what every headline says. And if you're a cloud engineer or wanting to break into this field, every day you're scrolling on Twitter or on YouTube and everyone's telling you that AI is writing code and passing a new benchmark. It's deploying infrastructure and automating deployments. You probably get that mix of anxiety and uncertainty every time that you see another AI breakthrough. It's demoralizing and I get it. Having worked in tech for over a decade, I've seen trends come and go, but AI is definitely here to stay and we are only in the beginning phase. Now, speaking to my clients and even my students inside of my Cloud Engineer Academy, this is probably their biggest concern right now. So here is what I can tell you with absolute certainty. AI is definitely automating some work that was previously done by cloud engineers, just like every other tech job. But the engineers that are thriving, they figured out something crucial. There are certain skills that AI simply cannot touch. And in this video, I'm revealing the five cloud skills that you need to survive AI in 2026, so you become more valuable because of AI, not despite it. Now, the first and most important skill is developing an AI native mindset. Now, let me explain. This is about understanding that every business needs to rebuild how they operate with AI at the center. Every CEO is being asked about AI, and I'm sure you've seen the headlines, but if you haven't, big tech is spending more than $320 billion on AI and cloud in 2025 alone. Being AI native means fundamentally rethinking how businesses solve problems, serve customers, and create value. That's like the fundamental building blocks of any business, and in 2026 and beyond, these are being reshaped permanently. I mean, just last week, our talent partner inside of my academy that's recruiting for a massive technology consultancy in the US is echoing the same principle. Companies right now are actively looking for engineers who have this AI native mindset. As a cloud engineer with an AI native mindset, you're not just designing and deploying infrastructure because now you understand that every system that you build needs to be designed for AI from the ground up. Let's say that you are deploying AI models in the cloud. Your databases need to handle AI's massive data requirements. Your infrastructure needs to scale for unpredictable AI workloads. Your architecture needs to support continuous model updates without downtime. And more importantly, you need to understand the business transformation. Because when your boss says that we need AI, you know they're really saying that we need to compete with companies that are 10 times more efficient because of AI. So you design infrastructure that doesn't just support AI, it actually enables the business to become AI native. Everyone's starting from scratch and rebuilding their companies with AI at the forefront. So this mindset shift to become AI native and understanding AI changes everything. How data flows, how decisions get made, how systems scale, how security works. And to develop this skill, stop thinking of AI as a feature that you add to existing systems. It's not something that you just bolt on, right? You need to start thinking about how you rebuild those systems from scratch if AI was the foundation, not the afterthought. So ask yourself, if AI could handle 80% of this workload, how would I architect differently? This is AI native thinking. The second cloud skill is engineering leadership the ability to communicate effectively, guide technical decisions, and influence without authority. Soft skills are often what separates cloud engineers stuck at the 80 to 100K salary range to those making over 250K a year. Now, leadership isn't about being a manager and overseeing things. It's about being an engineer others turn to when they are stuck. The one who can think and see two to three steps ahead and understand second order consequence to prevent problems before they even happen. An engineer who can explain complex technical decisions in ways that make Makes sense to everyone, including your managers and executives who aren't technical. Let me give you a real example. Let's say that your company is moving to the cloud and they're choosing between cloud providers. Those with engineering leadership consider the team's existing skills. Can they learn a new platform quickly? What's the time delay? and the cost to the business. You think about vendor lock-in. What happens if we need to switch to somewhere else in just two years? Engineering leadership also means taking responsibility. When systems fail, you don't blame others or make excuses. You own it, you fix it, and you make sure it doesn't happen again. When juniors make mistakes, you mentor them instead of criticizing them. When deadlines are unrealistic, and this one was crucial in my career, and it's what helped me progress as fast as I did, I pushed back when I felt the data and the expectation of what the CEO wanted us to do wasn't realistic in the timeframes that they wanted it to be done. So it's all about managing expectations, managing up and offering alternatives if needed. This skill becomes more valuable as teams get smaller and flatter. Companies don't just want cloud engineers who execute tasks. AI can now do the execution. They want cloud engineers who can drive projects forward, take ownership and make decisions uncertainty, even if there isn't a perfect solution. And by the way, 
if you want my help developing these skills and you want to become a cloud engineer, then just simply click the link below where you can book a call with my team. We've actually helped over 681 students inside of my academy, and we've had lots of students getting hired recently, even in this supposedly tough job market. So if that sounds at all interesting for you and you're serious about making this transition happen, then book a call with my team and maybe I'll see you inside. The third skill is first principles thinking, breaking problems down to the fundamental truths and then building up from that. Now, most engineers solve problems by copying what worked elsewhere. Maybe you've done this already when you're watching a tutorial project on YouTube and they're showing the what and the how, but crucially, you're not understanding the why. Now, you might have heard that Netflix uses microservices. So you suggest using microservices or worse, I see this all of the time, but everyone wants to use Kubernetes. I've had my students ask me so many times if they need to learn Kubernetes to get their first role in cloud. And the answer is always a resounding no. By using first principles thinking, it means questioning everything. Why do we need a database? Well, to store data. Why store it? Well, to retrieve it later. What if we didn't need to retrieve it? What if we processed it all in real time and only stored the results? You see how that works? This way of thinking is especially powerful with AI because we're solving new problems daily that we've not seen before. How do you serve AI models to millions of users? How do you update the models without downtime? How do you handle AI hallucinations in production? There is no no real playbook. You need to reason from fundamentals. First principles thinking also means challenging requirements. When someone says we need 99.999% uptime, you ask what downtime actually costs. Often 99.9% .9 uptime at half the price is the better business decision. To develop first principles thinking, practice breaking problems down to basics. Ask why five times to get to the root. Challenge the assumptions. What if the opposite were true? What if we had 10 times more users or 10 times fewer users. This mental flexibility helps you solve novel problems that AI can't handle. The fourth crucial skill is technical excellence. Not just knowing tools, but mastering the craft of building systems. Let me be direct here. You need to actually build things, not just watch tutorials, not just get certifications, but build real systems that solve real problems. Get hands on. Technical excellence today means mastering the tools companies are actually using. Of course, the core for AWS services, EC2, S3, VPC, IM. Infrastructure as code with Terraform or CloudFormation because nobody manages infrastructure manually. CI/CD pipelines because deployments need to be automatic and they need to be safe. And yes, you need to understand AI through services like AWS Bedrock or SageMaker for training and deploying models and understanding how to build AI powered applications. Now, these might be different tools that you have to learn in five years, but the principles remain the same. Here is the key. Don't tie your identity to any specific technology. AWS might bring new services tomorrow that become the standard. We might might stop using CICD pipelines one day. They're just a means to an end, right? But what matters, as I said, is actually mastering the craft of building production cloud systems, real ones. It also means knowing when to use what. Now, not every problem needs Kubernetes. Not every database should be SQL. Not every application needs microservices. The best cloud engineers choose boring technology when boring technology makes the most sense. Now, to develop this skill, build something every week. It's pretty straightforward, but unfortunately, most people never get beyond watching videos and tutorials. Start with a small project and grab gradually increase the complexity as you get better and more comfortable. Explain your trade-offs and know why you chose one service over another. The fifth skill is security by design. Building security into everything from the beginning and not as an afterthought at the end. Security isn't about knowing the security tools. To me, it's an obsessive way of thinking. Every line of code, every architecture decision, every configuration choice, you are asking how could this be exploited? Now, let me explain what this really means. When you design a system, you assume that it will be breached, not might be, will be. So you build in layers. If attacker gets past a firewall, encryption stops them. If they steal credentials, multi-factor authentication blocks them. If they compromise one service, isolation prevents the spread. This is called zero trust architecture. Trust nothing and verify everything. If you haven't seen or heard about zero trust, it's an entirely new approach to security. Every request is authenticated, every piece of data is encrypted, and every action is logged. You assume attackers are already inside and design systems to limit damage. Here is why this matters more than ever. AI is making attacks sophisticated and automated. Attackers use AI to find vulnerabilities, craft perfect phishing emails, and exploit systems at scale. The only defense is engineers who build security into the foundation, not bolt it on later. This also means understanding, compliance, and privacy 
you know, GDPR, HIPAA. These aren't just legal requirements. They are forcing functions for good security. You need to know where data lives, who can access it, and how to prove that it's protected. The average data breach costs just under $5 million. And we're not even counting for the loss of reputation and the loss of trust. Now to develop this skill, I suggest that you build something, try to break it. Just think about social engineering, not just technical attacks. Consider inside threats, not just external attackers. This paranoid thinking applied during design creates systems that survive in the AI world. These five skills, AI native mindset, engineering leadership, first principles thinking, technical excellence, and security by design will help you survive the AI revolution in 2026. But here's the truth. You don't need all five skills to be valuable. Master just two of these and quickly you become irreplaceable. Companies desperately need cloud engineers who can think and not just complete tasks. The cloud engineering boom is only growing in 2026. Over 90% of companies in the UK are using cloud services. And this is even more in the US and the rest of the world. Now, using AI to handle the boring, repetitive tasks because the engineers thriving in 2026 won't be competing with AI. They are leveraging AI as a powerful tool to save time while they focus on higher leverage tasks. And look, if you're worried about your future, well, I think this is actually a logical answer. And let me explain. To me, worry is like an anxiety, right? Which means that you are uncertain about what's coming and you're not sure about your future. Which signals to me that somewhere there's a gap within your skill set that you need to fill. And as soon as you start preparing and building your skill set, that uncertainty and anxiety slowly starts to disappear because you're preparing for it. It's quite simple when you look at it logically. And yeah, these skills will of course take time to develop, especially if you're trying to figure things out alone. And you can't download them or just earn them with a certification right? You have to build them through experience, not just copying what others are doing and actually pushing yourself beyond the barriers. But once you have these skills, then you are set. The new AI era is creating a new divide among engineers. And if you're not preparing now, you will fall behind. As always, I'm rooting for you.